Welcome back everyone to part 3 of 3 of this Night of Platoons and we are once again and still Platoon with Bruiser here in War Cry Death. This time around we are on steps and we are all in tanks with autoloaders so this could be, uh, if we all stick together, this could be very bad for anybody who happens to come around the corner with us nearby. Now this isn't exactly the map I was hoping for for this but hey it's what we were dealt with and it is the next battle in the series because remember all these replays in this series were one after another so I'm just showing it to them showing it showing them to you in the order they appeared and you'll get to see what a night platooning with me could be like on for the most part the better night and you can see there that war cry death he does have the mark of excellence on his gun barrel the little white stripe it might be kind of hard to see but it's there so it looks like he's played this map this uh, tank a few times and is reasonably well versed with it Right now, I would have loved to bring my 5100 to this as well. However, whoops, <laughs> we're ramming each other. I don't have a 5100, so this is the next best thing. My tier eight auto loader, and put one to them. And Bruiser, come on, you don't have to unload your whole clip into him. Back up. <laughs> one day we will train Bruiser in the ways of the auto loader. He hasn't had a whole lot of them before, but one day. <laughs> Alright, now, I'm feeling a little bit outnumbered here already, and uh, seeing as pretty much all of us are now reloading, eh, it's not good. There's an M41 Bulldog up there, he's, he's a, uh, he might be a scout, but he's got a nasty gun, and we don't have a whole lot of armor. In fact, I'm probably more well armored than the other two. In fact, earlier today, when I was playing a battle with my T95, there was actually a T69 that bounced my shell off its turret, which was frustrating. <clears throat> frustrating, but, uh, whatever. <laughs> it was kind of like a... Uh, come on. And... Boom. There's two kills with one clip. I can't complain about that. That bulldog was looking at me, though, like a hungry bulldog, I guess. Looks like War Cry Death there is feeling the pressure. There's not a whole lot I can do for him, though, because I'm not reloaded. All he can do is pretend that he does have some uh, rounds in that clip to try to scare the guys around, away from around the corner. Uh, hmm. What can we possibly do, though? Okay, he he missed. There's a Lobe down there. Bruiser is now dead. The Lobe got him. And the T-32. Well, crap. There's no way I can take out three of them with one clip. So I'm going to fire at this T-32 as I run away. And unfortunately, none of them managed to go through. The one to his side was absorbed by his, was eight by his track. And the one to his front hit his upper plate rather than his lower plate as he backed around that corner over the hill. I'm taking some hits in the back from him, but there's not a whole lot I can do about that. If I sit around and just take more hits from him, then... <laughs> Did I just see that correctly? Did the enemy just friendly fire the other enemy? Alright, that works for me. So I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to speed across the field. There's an AMX-12T to my right that I noticed right after I started reloading. There's not much I can do about him right now, though, other than just get out of there before he decides to fire at me. I noticed that there's another Rheimatel Borsig. Jeez, there's one of those in almost every game tonight, isn't there? that I mentioned. <laughs> and we're going to go take care of him. Looks like he's a probably a two-shot kill. And he has very thin armor. There's a Hellcat up there, which I'm actually almost as worried about the Hellcat as I am about the Rabatel Borsig. If that Hellcat catches me while I'm reloading, then I am in some serious trouble. And that was actually a ricochet <laughs> off of the 12T. Not, a, not absorbed by his track, but an actual ricochet. And you're going to see him kind of bug me about that in chat here in a second. And I looked at the after battle report after, and it said nothing about a track being damaged. And uh, you could actually see the shell ricochet off into the air there, if you look carefully, when I killed him. And now I'm reloading, even though the Hellcat's nearby. The uh, fact is, there won't be enough shells in one clip for me to kill him anyway. Uh, well, with one clip remaining, one clip when one shell wouldn't do it in that clip. So I need to reload. It looks like there's an AMX. All right, scratch the AMX. <laughs> And the M4 going to get him. Looks like a, the a Ock Point Ock got him, though, from across the map. So that's fine. Now I'm going to speed back towards base. Looks like the low is over there. I can't tell yet if the T32 followed him. He hasn't been spotted again yet. Uh, the M41 Bulldog, he is probably going to be going artillery hunting here in the enemy base, as you can see on the mini-map. Yep, he found the Hummel. My money's on the M41 winning, but I guess we'll see what happens here. Now, I want to get behind this Lovey as he's distracted. It looks like he isn't making any progress, really. And the T-32 is over there a little bit farther as well. He looks like he's going back towards the base after the M-41. And the M-41 now knows it. 
Uh, nope, that wasn't a very good shot I had lined up there anyway. And now I'm debating, should I reload? Should I reload? Before I go for this low bay. Because I do want to get beside him. However, I decided, you know what? I'm not going to take the time to reload because the my allies are being picked off. Hopefully I can get in there, distract the low bay, put a couple shots into him. Hopefully all three. Maybe kill him myself. And if not, have my allies finish him off. But, ooh, he sees me. He hits me. That's not the kind of thing I wanted to happen right now because that T-32 is going to be poking over the ridge behind me. Mm, that one didn't hit the weak spot that I was aiming for on the front. It's not that there wasn't much aiming at that speed. And I didn't track him like I wanted to. Ooh, I thought for sure that next shot from him was going to kill me, but he left me with 66 health points. Sounds like he's taking fire from the from my allies now. M41 has successfully gotten out of there at the base, and I'm going to put this big rock that you see in the middle of the field between me and the 32 and go after him. Now, that wasn't a great battle. However, we, between the three of us, did already manage to pick up six kills in total. And I myself have done over 2,000 damage, which is, again, decent even if I die right now. I'm going to speed along beside this guy uh, on the opposite side of the ridge as him and try to get around behind him. Unfortunately, <laughs> the ridge wasn't quite as high as I expected it to be. And, well, needless to say, he got me. Now, it's up to the bulldog, who is nearly dead, and the uh, Yag Tiger, Ock Point Ock, <laughs> 8 point 8 is so much easier to say, who don't appear to be very good players platooned up uh, to deal with him. So this could really go either way, to be honest. Uh, looking at the stats of the, the 8.8, we'll see how this goes. And M41 is dead. Crap. Well... I think all of us were thinking that could have been really bad. The worry now is that these two guys won't work together. One will go in, get its butt kicked because it makes some stupid mistake like it's tracked and the T-32 flanks it, while the other one just kind of sits there waiting for nothing to happen or for it to peek over the T-32 to peek over the hill, which of course isn't going to happen. Or will it? Watching these two guys, I'm thinking, all right, the more Western 8.8, you need to get in there now. And the more southern one, you need to do the same, because if one of you tracks the other guy, one of you tracks the T-32, then how's the other one going to get a shot at him if there's a hill between the two of you? Luckily, the T-32 is dumb enough, or oblivious enough, but doesn't know that the more western 8.8 .8 is coming for him yet, or that he's there. Uh, there is a hill positioned just right for our 8.8s to get the higher ground and both get a view at him, so now... Even if he does kill one, he's not going to be able to kill the second, which is at 100% health over there still. Before they kill him in return with their very nice rate of fire. So that luckily didn't turn out badly. Uh, but it, it really could have, in my opinion. Now for this battle, we're like, hey, War, want to, uh, would you mind if we went for a tier 10 battle? And he doesn't have a tier 10 himself, so he decided to bring his 5120, which is perfectly fine. He said it was okay with him, so we, we went ahead and did that. Uh, originally, Bruiser was thinking about bringing his uh, one of his tier 10 artillery pieces, <laughs> but uh, luckily he did because we ended up on Himmelsdorf. And this is a map that I'm not, I, I don't mind at all, especially in this tank. Um, it depends on the tank. If I'm in my E25, then this is one of the last maps I want to see, but this isn't bad at all. So now then, this is the last replay of the night, from this night, I should say, and uh, we're going to make the most of it. This is a different lineup, of course, the tanks, and this spawn is very crowded. Excuse me, pardon me. 1375 cuts us off a couple times. Didn't really get in our way too much, but uh, enough. The whole time we were playing, we were hinting to uh, Warcry Death, who wasn't a clan himself, as you can see. Like, hey, our clan needs more people. You, you, you should totally come join us. But no, it sounds like he hasn't been in his clan a whole uh, too long, but he's happy there. It sounds like he's pretty cool guys according to him. So, ooh, I am spotted already? Sixth sense, thank you. I'm not sure exactly what spotted me. Hopefully that E100 will tell me. Oh, I guess it was the 75. And 1375 probably wouldn't have been able to hurt me easily. He might have been able to, but not easily. So I probably should have uh, helped him out. Now Bruiser's complaining that his map's gone, and I'm like, Bruiser, you know that the M key makes the map reappear and disappear, right? Yeah, he did. Apparently there was some other thing going on. I figured that there's... I came to the conclusion afterwards that uh, the mods he has, because he has different mods than I do slightly, that uh, there was something going on with this mod pack causing his map to act up. 
now I'm looking across the map and I'm thinking, do I want to come around this corner again behind this E100? I don't want to get in the way of his side scraping, which means I had to back up pretty far and potentially puts me in a good place to get hit by their artillery, and there's a fair amount of it. And depending on where they're positioned, they might be able to hit me if I do back up as far as that E100 is right now, for example. Uh, I do look across the map, though, and I see that E100 over there, the enemy one, is potentially near a window. And I'm thinking, hmm, can I get a shot off at him? I can. Oh, I don't have time to aim for a whole lot of time. It only does 224 damage, which for an 8,000 credit round sucks, because that's like 7,000 out of 8,000 credits down the drain right there for the amount of damage that was done, if not more. Um, so I decided to load an armor piercing for the next one, because for the front of E100s, that's really how you have to do it in uh, a tank such as this, with the 183mm gun here. Alright, E100. Now, unfortunately, now that I've loaded armor piercing around, he's going to show us the side of his turret through there. I don't have much time to aim, uh, but we still managed to get a fairly high roll of 1260 damage, which is, is nice. So I'll take that. It's better than 224, and it pays for the, the price of the armor piercing shell, which I believe is 2,500 credits, rather than the 8,000 credits of the Hesh round. Alright, I'm trying to get another shot doing that again. I'm driving by there trying to spot him, but uh, it just doesn't quite work. So he's probably moved on to a more secure location. Yep, yeah, it turns out he has his backed up there, so I can't hit him anymore. T-49 is kind of coming up behind him. It looks like he's dealing with the RU-251. Yep, RU is dead by the T-49. Now there's an IS-7 down here, and I'm thinking, hmm, I could potentially peek around the corner. I could finish him off with one shot, uh, but the chances of me actually hitting his weak spot is pretty minimal, and I didn't feel confident enough to take that shot. So I'm going to push up here with the E-100. I'm not sure if it's a good idea yet, but it looks like the rest of my team's going to do so, so I'm not going to get a chance to shoot at anything if I stay back. So I might as well go up and support my team to give us the best chance of winning. So remember, teamwork <laughs> is better than uh, just feeding yourselves one at a time to the enemy. The IS-7, by the way, seemed quite surprised to see me. I don't know why he didn't shoot me instead of the E-100, but whatever. I had an armor-piercing round loaded still, so even if that probably wouldn't have penetrated if it was a hash round, but it might have. And if it didn't, then it would have done a lot less damage than 1,177, so, hey, I'll take it. Now there's a Yogg Tiger down there as well. I've loaded up a Hesh round again. And... Fire! Alright, we hit him. I wasn't fully aimed. I was trying to wait as long as I could so that I could fully aim. But now this battle, the only thing it lacked was a lot of was hits that did over 1600 damage. Those ones are the fun ones, especially when they do like 2000 damage in one shell, and it's amazing. One-shotting M103s is quite fun. All right, here's the T57 Heavy. He sees me at the last second here, and he's like, oh crap, you see him turn his turret towards me, but it's way too late. <laughs> Sorry. Doesn't matter if that one penetrates or not, you're probably dead anyway. Now there's the E100 over here again. I'm debating loading an armor piercing round, but I decided since the Hesh is already half loaded, and the E100 doesn't have a whole lot of health points left himself. Uh, well, I might as well just fire the Hesh. And I decided to duck into cover here as much as possible. I am spotted. I'm not interested in capping. I'm going to go around the corner, take the hit if I have to. And we'll put one in the front of the E100. Did 741 damage, which, to be honest, with the Hesh round, is more damage than I expected to do to the front of the E100's turret. But uh, it still wasn't, wasn't quite enough to kill him. Luckily, our teammate there managed to make up for the difference. That's a Waffen. Uh, Waffentrager Panzer IV over here. However, I'm going to ignore him because he's not who I want. He's back up behind the corner too and I'm not fully aimed or fully reloaded. Instead, I'm hunting down this artillery who is right down there and I'm going to rush this shot a little bit. Mm, dang. Because I didn't want the other guys to get the kill before I did because I'm greedy like that. Although I should have made it, I should have aimed a little more and he moved at the last second too which didn't help at all. Although I'm pretty sure that shell fell short and actually hit the uh, wreckage from the building first. And now this artillery piece, I want to know his hiding spot because you're going to see all of us go into the town around our cap circle. You saw that he started to capture there a little bit. So, Yet we have a horrible time trying to find him. Brewster seems to have a fun time finding him. He'll find out why in a second, but uh, I'm thinking, hmm, if I were him, Bruiser's not finding him, the FE's not finding him, they've went down just about every alleyway so far, and they're going to be covering everyone in another second. I've debated turning down there, which I should have. Kaboom, explosive things to run over. Looks like ammo crates or something like that. 
And I'm thinking, did he book it towards the hill? No, there was a medium on our hill that went down there. So he couldn't have done that unless he went down the 7 or 8 line here. And nope, he's back there. He's He was between the alleyways. If I would have went down that path that I was thinking about going down before, then I probably would have found him, which might have been a bad thing for me. But uh, we can only hope that it would have led to his death before mine. Bruiser's like, hey, artillery. And artillery's like, hey, bruiser. <laughs> and shotguns him. Shotguns him. All right, well, that went pretty well. Again, there's another five kills between the three of us again. Uh, it was a great net of platooning. Thank you, Bruiser and Warcry Death 19 for joining me. It uh, was a lot of fun. Hopefully we can do it again soon. I know Bruiser, me and Bruiser will for sure, and Warcry Death will have to get you back again one, another time too. Uh, but anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you, Hopefully you enjoyed the kind of quote-unquote story of a night of platooning with uh, a few of us. And yeah, I'll see you around. Bye-bye.